This video will show you how to animate smoke collisions in Blender, please watch it to the very end. When you open Blender, first press delete to delete the default cube. Press shift to then go to mesh and add a cylinder. Now press tab to go to the edit mode. Click on this X to go to the side view then press G then Z then 1 to move it up by 1. Click on this Z to go to the top view then click on this icon to activate face selection then select this top face. Press I then 0.6 to insert it by 0.6. Click on this X again to go to the side view then press G then Z then 0.2 to move it up by 0.2. Press E then 0.1 to extrude it up by 0.1. Press E then S then 1.2 to extrude and scale it up by 1.2. Again press E then 0.7 to extrude it up by 0.7. Now click on this Z to go to the top view then click on this face and press I then insert this face up to this level. Come to the modifier properties then click on add modifier then go to generate and add a subdivision surface modifier. Click on this Z to go to the bottom view then select this face and press I to insert it up to this level. Click on this Y to go to the side view then press Ctrl or then click and move this edge loop up to somewhere here. Press Ctrl or again then click and move this edge loop down up to this level. Come to these faces also and press Ctrl or then click and move this edge loop up to somewhere here. Press Ctrl or again then click and move this edge loop up to somewhere here. Come to these faces then press Ctrl or then 2 then click and right click to add two edge loops here. Come to these faces as well then press Ctrl or then 2 then click and right click to add two edge loops to them. Click on this Y to go to the side view then press Ctrl or then click and move this edge loop up to this level. Press Ctrl or again then click and move this edge loop up up to this level. So come to these edge loops then press 3 to switch to face selection then press Alt and click here to select this entire face loop. Click on this Y to go to a side view then come up here and click on this icon to activate X-ray visibility. Press E and extrude them up up to this level. Zoom into these faces and press Ctrl or then 2 then click and right click to add two edge loops. Come to these faces as well then press Ctrl or then 2 then click and right click to add two edge loops here. Come to these faces also and press Ctrl or then click and move this edge loop up to somewhere here. Press Ctrl or again then click and move this edge loop up to somewhere here. Come up to these top faces as well and press Ctrl or then click and move this edge loop up to this level. Select this bottom face and press I then insert this face up to this level. Click on this Y to go to the side view then click on this icon to activate the X-ray visibility then press G then Z and move it up to somewhere here. Press I again and insert this face up to this level. Now come to the modifier properties then click on add modifier then go to generate and add a solidify modifier. Come up here and click on this icon to switch to the wireframe mode. Come to the solidify modifier and increase this thickness to 0.03. Come up here again and click on this icon to switch back to the solid view then press tab to go to the object mode. Go to object then click on shade auto smooth to shade it auto smooth. Now press tab to go back to the edit mode. Press 2 to switch to edge selection then select these two edge loops. Press ctrl shift b to bevel them then come down here and click on this drop down arrow to expand on the settings. Click here to switch it to edges then increase these segments to 3. Click here on width then change it to 0.035. Press 3 to switch to face selection then press Alt and click here to select this face loop. Press Ctrl plus 8 times to select the following faces. Now come to the object data properties then click on this plus icon to add a vertex group. Click on assign to assign them to this vertex group. Now come to the modifier properties then click here under vertex group and add the group. Click on this icon to invert the group factor. Press alt then click on this edge to select the edge loop then press ctrl shift b to bevel it. Click here to switch it to edges then increase this width to 0.02. Press alt then click on this edge to select the edge loop then press ctrl shift b to bevel it as well. Click here to switch it to edges then increase this width to 0.01.
Do the same for these other edge loops until the model is even out. Now press tab to go back to the object mode. Come to the modifier properties and click on this box to activate even thickness. Press shift to then go to mesh and add a plane. Click on this Y to go to a side view then press S then 4 to scale it up by 4. Select this bottle then press G then Z then 2 to move it up by 2. Now go to the physics properties then click on rigid body to add a rigid body physics to it. Scroll down to shape then click here and change it from convex hull to mesh. Select this plane as well then come back to the physics properties and click on rigid body to add a rigid body physics to it. Click here and change this type from active to passive then scroll down to shape and change it from convex hull to mesh. Now if you play it, you can see it falling down but if you look closely you can see that there is a small gap between the plane and the bottle. To fix that, come back to the physics properties then scroll down and click on this drop down arrow on sensitivity then reduce this margin to 0.001. Select this plane as well then come back to the physics properties and reduce its sensitivity margin to 0.001 as well. Now if you play it, you can see it coming out well. Now go to the scene properties then click on this drop down arrow on rigid body world to expand on it. Scroll down and click on this drop down arrow on cache then click here and increase the simulation start frame to about 60. Now click on bake to bake the simulation. Now if you play it you can see it looking fine. So select this bottle then go to object then rigid body and click on bake to keyframes. Click on ok to bake keyframes. Now if you play it, you can see that the frames are there. So come back to the scene properties then scroll up and click on remove rigid body world. Now if you play it, you can see that it is well animated. So now press shift to then go to meta ball and add a ball. Click on this Y to go to a side view then press G then Z then 1 to move it up by 1. Press S and scale it down up to this level. Now press tab to go to the edit mode. Press Shift D and duplicate it somewhere here. Repeat this process several times and duplicate them all around forming a cloud-like form. Now press Tab to go back to the object mode. Right-click then go to Convert to then select Mesh. Now if you press Tab and go back to the edit mode, you can see that it has become a mesh. So press Tab to go back to the object mode. You can press S then 0.7 to scale it down by 0.7. Now if you play it you can see how it is coming up. Press Shift to then go to Mesh and add a cube. Click on this X to go to a side view then press Tab to go to the edit mode. Press G then Z then 1 to move it up by 1. Press S then Shift Z then 6 to scale it up by 6 locking the Z. Press 1 to switch to vertex selection then select these top vertices. Press G then Z then 4 to move it up by 4. Now press tab to go back to the object mode. Come up here and click on this icon to turn off x-ray visibility then come to the physics properties and click on fluid to add a fluid physics to it. Click here and change its type to domain. Select this metaball cloud then come to the physics properties and click on fluid to add a fluid physics to it. Click here and change its type to flow. Now if you play it, you can see the smoke raising. Select this bottle then come to the physics properties and click on fluid to add a fluid physics to it. Click here and change this type to effector then click on this box to activate as planar. Now if you play it, you can see it colliding with the bottle. So select this flow object then come to the physics properties and scroll down to flow source then click on this drop down arrow to expand on these settings. Click here and reduce the surface emission to 1 then click here as well and increase this volume emission to 1. Now select this domain object then come back to the physics properties and scroll down to field weights. Click on this drop down arrow then reduce this gravity to 0. Now if you play it you can see that the smoke is no longer raising. So come back to the physics properties then scroll up and click on this box to activate adaptive domain. Under gas, click here and increase on this buoyancy to 2. 
Now if you play it, you can see that nothing much has changed. So come back to the physics properties then scroll down to field weights and reduce this gravity to minus 1. Scroll up under border collisions then click on this box to activate bottom collisions. Now if you play it you can see the smoke falling down. Since we need the bottle to clash with the smoke before it falls down, select this bottle then come to the timeline. Select these keyframes then press G and move them to around the 20th frame. Now if you play it, you can see the bottle colliding with the smoke. Select this domain then come to the physics properties then scroll down and click on this drop down arrow on dissolve then click on this box to activate it. Now if you play it, you can see the smoke disappearing way too quickly. So come back to the physics properties and increase this dissolve time to about 40. Now if you play it you can see that it is now coming out well. So come back here and increase this to about 60. Now if you play it you can see it coming out well. So come back to the physics properties then scroll up and click here then increase this resolution to about 128. Now if you play it, you can see that it has become more detailed but it is no longer clashing with the smoke. So come to the physics properties and click here then reduce on this time scale to about 0.5. Select this bottle as well then come back to the timeline and press G then move these keyframes to around frame 10. Now if you play it, you can see it colliding strongly again. So select this domain then come back to the physics properties and scroll down to cache. Click here and change this type from replay to all then click on this box to activate is resumable. Click on bake all to bake the simulation. Now if you play it, you can see that it hasn't come out well yet as expected. So select this flow object then come back to the physics properties then click here and reduce on this surface emission to 0.5. Click on this box to activate as planar. Select this domain then come to the physics properties and scroll down to cache then click on free all to free the bake. Scroll up under gas then click here and increase the buoyance to 4. So scroll down and click on Bake All to bake the simulation. Now if you play it, you can see it coming out perfectly. So come up here and click on this icon to switch to the Render Preview. Go to the Render Properties then scroll up and click here then change this Render Engine from EV to Cycles. Now come down here and click on this icon then change this area to a Shader Editor. Click here on New to add a new material then select this principled BSDF shader and press Delete to delete it. Press Shift A and go to Shader then add a principled volume shader node. Plug this volume into the volume on the material output node. You can click here on Density and increase it to your liking. Click here on Color as well then adjust it to your liking. And now we're done. You can now go ahead to work on your scene further in render. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial up to now, I really appreciate. If you found this video useful please consider subscribing to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you never miss out on our latest content. Also let us know what you want us to teach you about Blender in the comments, I promise we'll make a video. Have fun animating, I sign out.